All right, thanks for joining us. So the most bitter rivalry in the Valley hit the diamond is Eagle Valley softball took on Battle Mountain for the first time this season. Heading into the third inning, Eagle Valley already up on Battle Mountain 14-0 and looking for one more run to end this game early. Addie Smith with the hit at the plate. She'll make her way to first and the Devils will start filling up those bases. At the plate now is Bella De Agostino. She doesn't swing at ball four and takes her base to put the Devils in scoring position with the bases loaded. Sarah Marino at the plate now. She'll put this one into play to bring a teammate home and the Devils will shut out rival school Battle Mountain on the diamond 15-0. Eagle Valley, they improved to seven and three on the season and are scheduled to play their next game against Northridge in a tournament in Greeley. While Battle Mountain on the other hand, will play Meeker at home Friday. Now we'll head inside the gym as the rivalry continued on the hardwood as Battle Mountain High Volleyball hosted Eagle Valley and were on the hunt for their first victory over their rivals since 2019. Battle Mountain looking to defend their home turf with only one loss on the season while the visiting Eagle Valley looked to pick up their sixth straight victory over the rival school. Down one set and looking to rally back in the second. Battle Mountain serves down 21-24 and it doesn't cross the net. Huskies enter the third set in the hole 0-2. On to the third set and this is where things get interesting. It's almost like Eagle Valley got comfortable with their lead and pumps the brakes. Eagle Valley serving down 13-23. Battle Mountain working together to set up the spike. It's not there so Gracie Halminski clears it to the other side. Eagle Valley back on the attack. They set up the spike, but the blocking is there, and the Huskies advance to set point. Huskies back to serve. Ball is in play. Eagle Valley scrambling around on offense, trying to make a move, but it's not there. Burgundy Dehera clears it, but the ball lands just outside, giving Battle Mountain their first set victory, 25-13. The third set was sloppy for the Devils, but they'll turn up the heat in the fourth. Nevertheless, Battle Mountain will keep this one close. On set point, Huskies up 24-23. Dulce Arona inbounds, and the Devils set up the spike, which Taylor Hooper nails, but she'll fall into the net. A costly error, and Battle Mountain will pick up the fourth set. The rival schools go into a tiebreaker, but the momentum is on the home team's side. Battle Mountain partying like it's 2019 as they get the win over their rival school 3-2. We caught up with senior setter Lily Suman after the game for her thoughts on the Huskies' victory. Well, they finally did it. Battle Mountain High School for the first time since 2019 knocked off rival school Eagle Valley. And joining me right now, Lily Suman, the senior from Battle Mountain High. Lily, what does this win mean to you? It means everything my senior year. I've never beat them before. And just like, especially to come back when we were down two sets, like, this team is just different. This team is special, and I'm so glad that it's my senior team. And I see you getting a little emotional right I'm now. Very emotional. What was it like, you know, when the final score was set in the book, you guys all ran back to the locker room together? What was that moment like for y'all? It it's just so amazing to share that kind of an experience with a team, especially girls that you've, like, I've grown up with these people. I've played club with them since I was in eighth grade. Like, to finally reach this, like, milestone in my volleyball career, it's just incredible to share with these girls. So. It's, I'm, I'm on cloud nine right now. That's awesome. And you guys probably didn't start off the way you wanted to or were expecting to. You guys went in the hole down two sets, but rallied back and won the next three sets in a row. What does that kind of say about the resilience of this team? I just think we have the drive. Like, we want this more. We wanted it more than Eagle Valley did, obviously. Like, we, we didn't let that get us down, which in the past we have. Like, we've been down, and it's just hard to get over that mental, like, kind of wall but this team like like I said we're, it's different this year and I just think the resilience of all of these girls whether they're freshmen sophomores because we have every single grade on that bench it's it's just awesome to see and awesome to play alongside so and this game is circled on your calendar before every season is the game you want to win and one of the games you care most about on that regular season schedule what was the build-up like to this game what were you guys focusing on ahead of this matchup well, I mean, we've had a couple of league games and we've won them, like, which was also incredible. But I just think like we started off a little rocky in the season. And since then, we've had a two streak, a two win streak. And so just seeing that like our team is coming together, like 
our chemistry is starting to like finally get to the point we wanted at. Like it just, I feel like we've been prepared. Like I knew in my heart, even after the first two sets, we were winning this game. And I just, it's just cause I trust my team. I trust these girls and I know that we have a bond that is gonna help us get through that kind of stuff, especially when we're down. Okay, and earlier today before, you know, taking the court against Eagle Valley, you're a senior. Were there any words of wisdom you kind of passed along to your team ahead of this game? Duck the pebbles. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. I mean, we all, like all of us as seniors are leaders. Like we all have so much to say. Um, I just, I really believe in this team. And that's what I told them. I was like, I believe in, I believe in all of us. I believe in the bond we all have. Like I believe in the talent we have individually. Like I just, I trusted these girls and, and they pulled through and they, and they held their weight. And I just, it was a it was a group effort, but it was it's just so awesome. I'm just so happy. <laughs> and what does this kind of do for your confidence as a team? Knocking off that longtime rival after so many years of waiting and yeah. trying your hardest to beat them, how does this kind of elevate your confidence for the season? Like, it's like you have no idea. Like we have another game tomorrow. We have our homecoming game against Palisade, who's another big rival of ours. Um, I just feel un like we feel unbeatable right now. Like that is just such a milestone. And to show, like, even to win that way after being down, like, I just feel like this is going to set us up for success for the rest of the season. Like, just knowing that we can outperform and that we can buckle down when we're tired and, and work together and pull through and get the win. Okay, and like you just pointed out, not a lot of time before your next matchup against Palisade. You know, it's going to be a couple of hours of hard celebration right now, but then it's back to the grind because you want to win your next matchup. What do you guys, what do you think you need to do in order to catch that next win, to go 2-0 and on the week? I mean, because we don't have a practice, it's really just sleep, like eating well. Like, we all really take care of our bodies. Shelby's really good at, like, remind, like she texts us all the time, like, okay, time to go to bed. Like, make sure you're getting rest, make sure you're drinking water. Like, just really, like, off the court, doing the right thing for our bodies and stuff is, is how we kind of balance out the games that we don't have a practice in between or a day to rest. So, just that kind of stuff. Okay, and we got to talk about your coach a little bit, Shelby Crummer. She's not been here too long, about three seasons or so, but what was it like to see her get her first win over Eagle Valley? I mean, Michael Garvey, he's got a decorated career over there with that program. What was it like to kind of see your coach shake his hand and come up victorious in that matchup? It was, it was incredible. She's been the head coach all four years that I've been at Battle Mountain, and like her, I've, I've never seen that win either, so I can only imagine how emotional she is, especially to finally reach this point. Like, we, like we, they've always been our rivals, but it is such, like, this is a new team, like, under a new coaching staff. Like, it's, I think she's just, if not more excited than we are. She wanted it so much, and she's put so much, like, dedication and time into us. Like, it, it just feels so good to bring that home for her and to do that for her. But. You got any final thoughts you want to share about tonight's game? Um, I'm just so, I'm so proud of my team. I'm so thankful for this group for my senior year. Like, it's my last year, and I just, I could not have asked for a better team to end it with and a better, like, moment. Like, this is, this is just going to give me so much confidence. It's going to give our team confidence. Like, I can imagine the years to come. Like, it's going to be different now. Like, we've hit that. So, I'm just so proud of it. Everybody. All right. Thanks so much, Lily. Thank you. You can catch Battle Mountain High School tomorrow night again, back-to-back -back games right here against Palisade. Now we'll hit the soccer field where 3-2 and two Vail Mountain School was on the hunt for a home victory against Rifle, a school that's not too far away who's sitting at 4-1 and one on the year. Rifle takes a 1-0 lead in the first half, but Vail Mountain School determined to make something happen in the second. The corner kick is airborne and it lands in the lap of Rutley Heinemann who doinks perhaps the most perfect header I've seen since moving to the Centennial State to tie up the game at one goal apiece. What a score from Heinemann. Later, Vail Mountain School back with the ball, moving it around on the attack. A beautiful pass is made by Will Roy to Winston Pillsbury, who puts that egg in the nest to send Vail Mountain School ahead of rifle 2-1. Later, the corner kick is tapped to Heinemann, who drives inside but gets taken down in the box to set up that penalty kick front and center. Not looking good for Rifle right now, and is no surprise, Heinemann nails it, and the Gore Rangers go up 3-1 on the Bears, but Rifle, they're gonna make things a little interesting late. Yahir Marquez gets through the Gore Ranger defense, lets it fly, looks like it hits off a VMS player, but it rolls in. Nevertheless, that's good and a goal. But Rifle, they're gonna run out of time as they fall 3-2 to Vail Mountain School. Head coach Kevin Ives joined me for post-game chat. 
All right, so Vail Mountain School boys soccer just picked up their fourth win of the season against Rifle, beating Rifle 3-2 here at Vail Mountain School at home. Joining me right now, head coach of the soccer team, Kevin Ives. What did you like from your team today in this matchup with Rifle? Yeah, I mean, uh, we definitely got off to a slow start. Um, so we, we talked about halftime, about just having effort and finding some intensity. Um, I thought in the first half, Rifle did a great job of dictating uh, the flow of the game and kind of imposing their will on us. Um, so it was kind of the first time in, in my coaching tenure where I had to kind of challenge to the boys of, you know, are we, are we going to step up to this? Are we going to find that intensity and find that um, that that sense of urgency to play? And they definitely responded in that second half. So very proud of them of how they responded. And when the second half rolled around, go back to halftime. What did you just kind of tell your boys word for word if you could kind of provide any example to make them fight back in that second half and ultimately, you know, take the W? Yeah, uh, pretty much. I think the first thing I said, I said, boys, that was not good. Uh, that first half, um, you know, I, I've seen the way we can play and stuff like that. I think we just came out a little flat. As I mentioned, Rifle's a great team, very strong this year, took it to us in that first half. Um, so I told them, you know, hey, we're gonna come out same same starting 11 with the new formation in the second half, trying to find something new um, that worked for us. And I told the starters, I was like, you guys got 10 minutes. Um, and you know, if we're not seeing the intensity or starting to see a shift in the game, then we've got a lot of players on the bench that are ready to step out there and play. So um, I think that might've been the little kick in the butt that they needed today. Okay, and you mentioned kind of talking to the starters, firing them up a little bit. Were there any starters that you talked to at halftime that you were like, we need to lean on you boys, show up? No, you know, I, I think that's kind of the luxury of our program is, you know, we, we have a lot of great individual talent, um, but we always talk about collectively the team and in the unit as a whole. Um, so, you know, it's 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 the collective unit. It's not singling one person and asking one person to step up. Um, you know, it's asking everyone. We have a very close knit team. Uh, we've bonded very well together. Um, so it was more of just a team challenge than it was an individual challenge. And talking about players who stepped up, Rutley Heineman, it feels like I say his name just about every week. But, you know, he got that first goal for y'all, so you guys got on the board. What kind of momentum did that first goal bring to you guys that Heineman scored? Yeah, you know, that that was just exactly the spark that we needed. Um, I think one thing, you know, Rutley always brings to the table, which I always commend him for, is regardless if it's a game or if it's practice, the kid's always going 100%. Um, and I think with his talent, all of our other players can see that and they try to emulate that. Um, so I think first and foremost, he sets a great example in practice and then that same example carries over to the game um, and I just think we have a lot of players that look up to them and uh, you know doing 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 great work out there okay and you've been coaching a while in the valley I've never actually seen rifles fan base show up but you can tell they're a passionate group they're cheering the whole game you can hear them from the sidelines the entire game you know probably using some choice words about you and your team your players and the refing unfortunately but what do you tell your kids to kind of cut that crowd noise out and just focus on the game in front of them? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, first and foremost, I think we've kind of been guilty parties as that as well. Um, we've had some instances earlier in the season, myself included. Um, so we've kind of brought our, our program together over the last couple of weeks, and we talked about character, building good character, um, talking about how, you know, it's, it's okay to feel certain emotions, um, but with those emotions, you should always be in control of your emotions. Um, so kind of your reaction to that is always within your control. Um, so I think it's just something the boys have really taken to heart. Um, over the last two weeks, I've seen a real big uh, shift in culture in our program. Um, you know, you're not always going to agree with calls. Fans are always going to say stuff to you. Um, but just having the focus to move on to the next play and just keep playing. Okay. And sitting at four and two on the season, you played some tough teams. You played some lower caliber opponents earlier in the season as well. Are you feeling comfortable with where you're sitting with your record right now? You know, it's always good uh, to be on the right side of the win column. Um, I think we still have a lot of work to do for the goals that we want to achieve this year. Um, so, you know, we're going to enjoy this win and then, you know, come back to practice tomorrow, keep it light, have fun, um, but stay mentally focused. And we know we have um, a tough stretch coming down the road and we got a lot of strong teams. So for us, it's always about, you know, just finding good quality results throughout the regular season and then just playing our best soccer come playoff time. Okay, and talking about this stretch coming up, you have Aspen on the schedule for Thursday night. And then after that, you've got a school of Colorado Academy. You just told me earlier off camera that they may be one of the best teams in the state this year. What are you looking to get out of a matchup with a high caliber opponent like Colorado Academy? Yeah, you know, we, we're fortunate to play them every single year. Um, you know, we, we kind of use them as our barometer to see where we're at as a team. Um, you know, I think they're they're one of the best teams in the state, regardless of classification. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of nice. You know, we get to go down there. Um, you know, I think there's no pressure on us, even though, you know, we are the defending state champions. Um, I don't think anyone's going to expect us to win. So it's just go out, play loose, have fun, um, and then see if we can't get a result next Tuesday. What would a win against Colorado Academy mean for y'all? 
uh, that would be great. I'm going to go out, get myself a nice dinner, enjoy the night, have fun, relax. Um, but yeah, you know, they're a great team. So uh, just looking forward for the opportunity to, to get to play them. Okay, now let's come back a little closer to a game that's on the horizon for y'all. Thursday night, you guys have Aspen. One ski town versus another big ski town. What's that rivalry kind of there like? Yeah, so uh, I've only gotten to play Aspen once. Uh, my first year, we didn't play them just based on scheduling. Um, but from what I've heard, the rivalry is always intense, um, you know, regardless of how each side is. Um, so expecting a, a fun game, a loud game from the fans. Um, but yeah, I, I, liking our chances. If we come out, play our game, I think we'll be in good shape at the end of it. Okay, and you know, just seeing that atmosphere alone is going to be great for you guys, too. You're going to have both sides cheering back and forth, probably, from what I assume. But what do you need to see from your players on the field Thursday night in order to come out with a W? Yeah, I think just listening to the coaches, understanding what we want to do from a tactical sense, um, and then actually going out there and trying to execute it. Um, I think a lot of times in high school we can get caught up into the flow of the game and kind of lose our sense of self. Uh, so that's kind of my challenge for the team is understand what we want to do as a team, um, stay organized, and then try to execute tactically. Okay, and coming back to tonight's game against Rifle, were there any lessons you feel like you as a team learned in this matchup? You go down, you come back, you win the game by one goal. Any lessons there? Uh, you know, I think throughout the season, you're always going to face adversity. Um, you're you're going to have some ups. You're going to have some downs. Um, I think it's just about staying even keeled, staying the course. Um, so, again, just super proud of our boys going down 1-0, being able to battle back, take a 3-1 lead. Um, and then, you know, Rifle is a very strong team. I expect them to go deep into the playoffs. They make it 3-2 and then have a have a great opportunity at the very end. Um, and our goalkeeper made, made a heck of a save. Um, so, yeah, you know, j just proud of our boys of staying in the flow, believing in each other, sticking together as as a unit. Um, I think that's great. And real quick, what does that speak on the resilience of your squad? Uh, we have a very resilient squad. You know, I've seen it over the course of the years. Um, I think that really speaks to the togetherness. Um, you know, regardless of the score, they're always willing to fight. They're always willing to keep pushing, things like that. Um, and I think that's really kind of like the marking of a, a winning team or a championship team um, is, you know, when you're down, you're, you're still together, you're still working. Um, so yeah, just, just proud of the kids and how they respond. Okay, awesome. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, just having an absolute blast. Honored to be the coach of the program um, and just excited to see where the season takes us. Great. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Come out Thursday night as two of the biggest ski towns in Colorado square off right here on the soccer field. We got Vail Mountain School versus Aspen. Should be a great game. Over the weekend, 22 ranked CU football took on longtime rival Nebraska for the first time on the gridiron since 2019. Big Red fans made themselves heard at Folsom Field and were hoping to steal one on the road after dropping their season opener, but Coach Prime and the Buffs determined to keep the hype alive in Boulder. Prime talked about his defense not looking amazing on paper last weekend against TCU, but assured everyone they're legit and would prove it against the Cornhuskers. Jeff Sims calls for the snap, the ball hits the deck, and it's a fight for the football. But the home team will come away with it. The week prior, the Huskers turned the ball over four times and were not off to a good start in week two. Fast forward to the second quarter, Huskers back with the ball. Sims throws and it's picked off by Cameron Silman Craig. Buffs take over deep in Nebraska territory and it doesn't take long to make the magic happen on offense. Shadur Sanders eyeing his man Tarveris Dawson the entire time will let it fly and the catch is made for six. Buffs go up on Nebraska 10 to nothing and they'll stay cooking in the second half, but not before Nebraska makes things interesting with a 57 yard run to the crib from quarterback Jeff Sims. Huskers make it a six point game and look to be back in it, but CU will fix that narrative. Sanders looking downfield, fits it through a tight window to Xavier Weaver for the second CU touchdown of the day. Colorado starting to feel comfortable. Moving on to the fourth quarter, the Buffs will put that nail in the coffin with an eight-yard touchdown run from Dawson. Not a lot of fight from Nebraska in this one, but Shadur Sanders said this matchup became personal as soon as the Huskers stepped on the field. We go out there, warm up. You got the head coach for the other team trying to stand in the middle of the buff. Like, it's okay if, if like, some, a couple players do it. It's fine, you know. Like, you just... Enjoy the scenery, but when you got the whole team trying to disrespect it, then I'm not, you know, I'm not going for that at all. So I went in there and disrupted it. The coach, the coach, 
said a lot of things about my pops, about the program, but now that he want to act nice, I don't, res- I don't, I don't respect that because you hating on another man, you shouldn't do that. So it was just all respect was gone for them in their program. So some strong words there from Sanders regarding his feelings towards the Huskers, stepping on that Buffs logo at center field, but his squad can take a deep breath and relax as they more than handled Nebraska. With the win over Nebraska, Colorado moves up a couple spots in the most recent AP poll and now sit at number 18 in the country. They remain the only team in the Centennial State to be ranked inside the top 25. Looking to next week, week three, for the Buffs, there's a lot to be excited about as they play in-state rival CSU. For the first time since 2019, that Rocky Mountain Showdown will be played again in Colorado. The Buffs will not only host the Rams, but they'll also host College Game Day for the first time since 1996 as the popular ESPN show makes its way to Boulder from Tuscaloosa. Now, the Buffs weren't the only football team in the Centennial State with an outstanding performance. D2 school Colorado Mesa University took on FCS opponent San Diego in the Golden State. Mesa would knock off the Division I school 28-21 in overtime. Normally, you use a higher caliber opponent to gauge your own team, but head coach of Mesa, Miles Kochever, told me at our Mac Media Day he had other plans entering the matchup with San Diego. What makes it a successful game, walking out of San Diego and taking the bus back to Grand Junction after finishing that game? Go win. <laughs> no, and, and, and good question, but you know, we're, we, we're playing them all to win. Um, but, you know, we want to go down there and we got to grow as a team. It's a preseason game, so that doesn't count on our record for the RMAC. Um, and we want to control the RMAC. So we need to be able to get better. Um, and we got to make sure that we continue to grow as a team throughout that game. Coach Kerchever and the Mavericks would go on to beat San Diego, picking up their first win against an FCS opponent since 2001. So that's a big deal for the RMAC Conference School. And taking a look now at the Division II AFCA coaches poll, CSU, Pueblo, and Western Colorado have jumped into the conversation as they join the top 25. Mines continuing to sit comfortably at number two, but Mesa staying out altogether as they fell in week one at home to Texas A&M Kingsville, but will start RMAC conference play this week, so they'll be a team to keep your eye on after the huge upset in San Diego last weekend. Finally, the Denver Broncos took the field for the first time this season at Mile High Stadium, and unfortunately, we saw a lot of similarities from last season. Broncos didn't put on much of a show as they practically mirrored the Raiders' stats here, ultimately falling to Las Vegas 16-17 in a mediocre, as I would say, season opener. The Denver Broncos will have to try their luck again this weekend as the 1-0 Washington Commanders come to Mile High Stadium, and that kickoff is slated for 225 Mountain Time. Make sure to continue coming back to us for all the latest in sports around the Valley and beyond. We'll see you next time.